My name is Fatuma Kuso, my daughter Zahra Adam Bule, the eldest of my five children, went missing Friday, May 26, 2023, 12 days later. Her husband of 18 years had been arrested and charged with the first degree of her murder. But I'm not here today to speak to the what, the why, and the who, and the where, and the how of the case. That I'm going to leave it to the criminal justice system, and hopefully justice will be served one day. What I want to share with you is when I posted my daughter's missing persons poster and followed with her murder and funeral and spoke about that. A lot of people reached out to me both in person and in social media telling me, you are so strong. I don't know how you're doing it. Trust me, I said those same things. Anytime I visit their parents that lost their child to car accident, health situation, I would think, how is this mother or this father standing around arranging burials, funeral services for their child. How are they walking around? How are they getting out of bed? So I understand when people say that, but trust me, this has nothing to do with strength. I am not stronger than any other mother that this tragic loss could have happened to. And my days are divided by the hours. And I try to get through the hours and feel my way through this haze of grief that lifts at one point of the day but comes back again. But I'm here today to share with you the reason that I am speaking out. If it's not strength, then what is it? It's this deep-seated anger, this deep-seated rage, the feeling of my daughter had been failed by the medical system. And what I mean by that is every time my daughter had injuries, and I always asked, can I tell you my side of the story? Things that my daughter might not tell you. Can I add to the story that my daughter told you? I wasn't asking for anybody to tell me what she had said because I knew what she said because she told me it. But what I wanted to do was to add to things that I knew she might not share. Maybe she was embarrassed. She was trying to fix the relationship, to go back, to take care of this person that she loved and was loyal to. But I had no loyalty. So I could tell things as I heard them from her, as I saw them with my own eyes. But I was always told, no, we cannot take your story. We cannot edit her file because we have to protect her privacy. What privacy? I'm not asking you to tell me what she said. I am telling you what I know so you can add to it. You can hopefully give my daughter a full risk assessment of telling her if this happened today and this happened yesterday and this could happen tomorrow, then this is where this is headed. Would that have saved my daughter? I don't know. But what I know is we were let down. My daughter was let down by a system that said privacy and I failed to see where is that privacy? If I am not asking you to tell me what she said, how are you breaking that privacy? I don't know. So ironically, all those files that I couldn't add to became mine as soon as my daughter was murdered at 36, her life cut short. Those became mine. Now I needed to give consent to this agency and to that agency for them to access a file that I wasn't allowed to add a sentence to. If you're listening to this video, does that make sense to you? Do you see that as something that makes sense? If I'm not asking you to tell me what she had said, I'm just giving you more information. My, so, so I'm just trying to show you where my mindset is. In, in, as I grapple with this painful experience that I do not wish it on my worst enemy.
and I tried to walk myself through this haze of grief and anger. And I also share this with you that if you are a woman in this kind of situation, please give consent to somebody in your circle, somebody you trust, somebody that loves you, somebody that would advocate for you. So when you are in the haze of this trauma you're trying to deal with, somebody else with a clear mind as an outside perspective could say, this is what happened yesterday. This is what happened day before. This is what I have noticed. This is what she told me. Please sign that consent form to your doctors, to your medical providers, so somebody else could add their two senses. So you can see a bigger picture. Somebody else in, in the professional sense could say, this is what we notice. And if you have a woman in this kind of situation in your life, please encourage them to sign a consent form. Please have this person um, to, to have somebody that could advocate for them when they cannot advocate for themselves. We all would get into a place where we cannot advocate for ourselves. And hopefully we would have somebody else in a clear mind could advocate for, for us. Because I have my mother in her 90s that's living with Alzheimer's and I am her advocate because she cannot advocate for, the, for herself. And that's where all of us are at some point in our life needing an advocate no matter what the situation. So have that consent form signed for somebody who cares about you, for somebody who's not in it to gossip about you or share your information with other people to say, to talk about you down and, and to mock you. No, you want somebody who's going to look out for you, somebody who can see it and say, this is what I noticed to somebody who is in a professional field that could tell you. I cannot stress enough, if you have a woman like that in your life, please try and encourage them to have that consent until we can get to a place where the medical professionals understand we need to find a way to protect the privacy of the individual without denying them advocacy. But in the meantime, Please sign a consent if you're a woman in this situation. And if you know a woman in this situation, encourage them to sign a consent form and take care of each other. Thank you.